Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of June 12th, 2013. Um, as we head into our summer, uh, we have a few different items this evening. In the first item uh, on the agenda, uh, our appointments. And we have two different groups uh, and, uh, being appointed tonight. Carol, you have the first one, please. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, this is for the Conservation Commission. There are three members whose terms have expired, uh, and all three have agreed to re-up, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, Candace McCann will be doing a full second term, and uh, John Sheen and Dave Stapleton uh, both uh, have um, been appointed over the last three years to full remaining terms, so this will be their first full term, but I think they both did for uh, two or three years, uh, one or two years. So I'd like to nominate uh, Dave Stapleton, John Sheehan, and Candace McCann for three-year terms on CONCOM. Okay, on uh, Mr. Stapleton, uh, he was an associate member last year? He was an associate member originally, right. Because he wasn't, um, I don't see his name on the and, and point. Next page. Next, oh, oh, thank yeah. you, thank you, there we go. Yeah. Good, okay, I will. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, I have one appointment, and that is to the Board of Fire Engineers. As we know, after a long, a long uh, um, um, many years of volunteer by Pete Sherman, he decided to step down. And this evening we want to, uh, I want to um, suggest that Peter Smith replace Pete Sherman uh, as a three-year Board of Fire Engineer. Right. Get it? Pete Sherman. Pete Sherman. Oh, he's, re uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I stand corrected on that. Uh, Pete resigned midterm, so Peter Smith's term will run uh, through 2015, so the remainder of Pete's, Pete Sherman's um, term. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Do I hear a second on that motion? Uh, second. I know Peter will be a great, uh, a great fire engineer uh, on the board, uh, but we certainly will miss Pete and his uh, years of service. Yes. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of appointing Peter Smith? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, good. That is it for appointments this evening. And as we go into our July and August and September meetings, we'll be appointing many more. Now, next item on the agenda is discuss Chapter 61A, Rights of First Refusal on Two Particular Pieces of Land in Dover. And over the last two meetings, um, we were notified about 287 Dedham Street, and the second being 36 Pig and Lane. And Mr. Ramsey, do you have anything to add before I know Carol wants to speak to this? As you know, Mr. Chairman, the uh, notice required uh, that it be delivered also to the Planning Board, the Conservation Commission, and the Board of Assessors. I believe the Open Space Committee has also seen it, and you've received comments back from the Planning Board and the Open Space Committee with respect to the parcels. Okay, I just got these uh, this afternoon, so I will uh, read their comments. Carol, do you have something to say? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm just trying to get the cross to get the paperwork. Um, the uh, the, the process that we go through on these uh, is to ask uh, CONCOM and the open space to check with the uh, Dover Land Conservation Trust uh, to see if there's any um, um, interest in these properties or any reasons that um, uh, they should be conserved uh, before authorizing it. So right now uh, there's some uh, uh, discussion going on in Pagan Lane, which I think is further along. And the Dedham Street, which came to us um, afterwards, actually uh, both CONCOM and Open Space have um, prepared a memo that uh, really uh, uh, talks at length and in quite a bit of detail uh, 
about the conservation value of the Dedham Street property. Mm -hmm. And uh, did, was Amy Wood going to be here this evening? Is that in the, is that in the email? No? Okay. Um, I thought I saw something that said she was going to be here. But um, so there's, there's, there's obviously going to be, I think, a lot more information, uh, a lot more discussion going on over the next couple of weeks on the Dedham Street property. And given its importance from a conservation wetlands and stream protection standpoint, I think we should certainly give them the time to explore this. Okay. After this preliminary analysis. Correct me on my um, knowledge of timing. Is it 60, 90, or 100 days after we were first notified? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. The intent being 120 days. 120, 120. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So we still have another approximately two and a half months because we were notified on uh, Ping and Lane April 26th. And I don't know um, Dedham Street off the top of my head. May 21st. May 21st, Gray? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Well, let's continue that. And let everybody look at the properties and uh, come to their conclusions. Okay. Good. Is uh, that enough on that issue? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I might be speeding along, but there is a Bruins game on this evening, so hopefully everyone understands that. <laughs> I know Dave and I will be watching. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is discuss the gifts and grants acceptance policy. Mr. Olmsen? At the board's request, uh, we had the finance team put together a draft policy uh, to reflect the new reality of the discovery of the chapter that allows or requires the selectmen to approve the gifts and grants before the monies be expended for those. So this is the draft policy in front of you for your consideration. You're seeing it for the first time tonight. Okay. Thank you, and thank you for all the hard work in putting this together. And uh, since this is the first time I see it, I would like to um, look at it very closely. And I know you have listed the gifts and grants on the back. Thank you for that. Now, for the purpose of uh, accepting this at a future date, do we need to open up this for open discussion um, to the public or? That's purely at your discretion, Mr. Chairman. This is an internal policy of the Board of Selectmen, obviously to be adopted in public session. But the extent to which you solicit public input is really up to you. Yeah. The reason I say that is because a lot of boards and committees and departments, uh, or I should say, are going to be affected by it. Well, my suggestion would be once you have the draft that you're comfortable with, that we distribute it to those people we know would be affected because they currently get grants or gifts and who are not excluded by the policy or other state law for their review as a courtesy at the very least. Okay, and ask for their input. Okay, prior to us uh, accepting or rejecting our whatever yep. case would be. Okay. Um, I, I would also just suggest since this, this was related to the um, significant uh, public um, attention that was paid to Sea Park and Town Meeting with mm -hmm. Article 12 and so forth, that um, you know, I believe we had, we had told uh, some of the folks at various selectmen's meetings that we we're going to be working on this this summer yes. and that we would let them know. Um, and ask for their input as well. So I think once we get to a point where we also send it out to all the various departments that we also um, make sure that some folks um, know that it's going to be on an agenda and ask, ask for their input. Okay, so logistically uh, at this point, uh, Carol and I will review this. Mm -hmm. um, and at what point do we send it? to the other departments after we're comfortable with the language? That would be my suggestion, yes. Okay. Carol, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Good. Okay, very good then. Uh, we'll take that under advisement and continue it to a further meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Senate Budget Amendment 59, which has to deal with an increase in MSBA reimbursement for the technical high school building projects. 
And okay, so um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been this whole issue of um, reimbursement for um, for Minuteman. You know, has been going on for about three years now. I think first meeting attended on it. Ford Spaulding, our rep there, is involved. He's actually on the chairing the building committee for it. But there are so many issues involved with the uh, way that the uh, Minuteman is is um, funded. And right now it's funded, the operating expenses are funded by the towns based upon an algorithm on um, population and attendance. By state law, the capital expense and, and out of out of district students pay a higher tuition rate. So those are the two revenue sources. By state law, capital expenditures can only be funded by the member towns. Now Minuteman is, has is in the enviable position of having students from many, many towns outside of the member towns, which is a good thing for them. But it means that there's a significant portion, and I, I don't remember, it's somewhere in the 30 to 40 percent range of students from towns that aren't paying dime one for capital improvements. So as they looked for tens of millions of dollars uh, to either rebuild uh, and uh, renovate Minuteman, there are all kinds of issues relative to changing the law so that non-member towns who have kids can, that some portion can be either used to uh, bump up the tuition or somehow do it. So that's one avenue to try to get more revenue to handle the building the, uh, expenses. The other is to uh, change the law relative to the percentage of the construction costs that the state can reimburse through the SBA. And they're working on that as well. And um, what the Minuteman School Committee and um, Ford specifically as our representative um, has asked us to do as he has for the other member towns is to uh, send a letter of support to our state rep, in this case, in this case uh, Mike Rush, um, to uh, give our support for a bill that's, uh, that's up there on uh, the state house. Uh, to, I'll, I'll just read it to you, for approved school projects for regional vocational technical school districts which have had out of district enrollment of 25% or more during five or more of the 10 preceding years. The reimbursement percentage otherwise calculated pursuant to subsection A shall be increased by 10%. So it's just another attempt to find a way to get more state funds mm -hmm. towards the construction. So Ford is asking for the Dover Board of Selectmen to uh, send a letter to Senator Rush uh, supporting this, this amendment. Recognizing that there's a very slim chance it's going to work, but nevertheless. Yeah. When you say this slim chance is going to work, uh, i.e. the the Commonwealth pointing out that one, no, okay. Well, I commend the effort, and I see no reason not to uh, send the letter to Senator Rush supporting uh, Minutemans and what they're trying to do. Obviously, we have other items in Minuteman that uh, we have to discuss over the next few years. Where they, they, I, I know they're studying rewriting the agreement for the member towns, uh, tr uh, trying to disband that, and they have a lot of issues, including the build out of the um, school itself. So I, I see no reason why we shouldn't send this um, letter along. Okay, in that case, um, I move that we um, send a letter to uh, Senator Rush uh, in support of the uh, proposed amendment. Okay. Do we vote on an issue like that? Yes, we do. Thank you for that. Uh, and I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. Good. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, would you Rose. just make sure to send forward a copy of that? Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Great, thanks. And should we send a copy to the superintendent also? We can no. do that to. Um, just as a. I mean, it'll get it. Sure Ford will get it. Yes. Yeah, get right. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda. 
is to execute a Carroll Community Center license agreement between the town of Dover and Erin School of Dance. And Gerard, would you like to speak of this? Sure. The um, license agreement for the three uh, tenants uh, who occupy space at the Carroll Community Center are expiring at the end of the fiscal year. And um, we have approached them about increasing their monthly rental payments by 5% as the board has done in recent years. Um, and so far we've only gotten a response back from Aaron School of Dance and um, Aaron's more than happy to pay the 5% increase. So her, her monthly rent would increase to $1,212 a month. So she has signed off on that and uh, we're asking for to sign an agreement this evening. No other changes to the agreement? No. All the terms are the same. Same exact square footage, everything. She's, she's more than happy with her space over there. I mean, is the town happy with her being a tenant? She's a very good tenant, yes, she is. And she serves primarily Dover and Sherburn uh, students, and uh, it's quite a popular program. She's been in business for 25 years now oh, really? in Dover. She started out with the parking lot. Then she went independent for a while, and she came back with the park and back. Yeah. She's kind of needy. Good. Um, I see no reason not to enter into this uh, license agreement, so I'll make the motion that uh, we enter into the license agreement between the Town of Dover and Erin School of Dance for the fiscal year 2014. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three. Three. Expect those other agreements to be. It, they should be coming to you hopefully at your next meeting. Um, the Childhood Development Center recently held a board meeting, and we're waiting to hear back from them. So we'll basically uh, next meeting, which will be July at some point. Uh, so we'll uh, will those uh, license agreements they automatically extend uh, um, if there's no agreement in place? How's that work? I don't believe there's any language that automatically extends them, but as a practical matter, that's what will happen. Okay. And we, we would ask them, this happened last year, to hold their July payment until a, an agreement has been signed in, in case there is an increase, and then they, they pay us retroactively in that one month only. Um, it is sort of cutting it close. Um, do, do they drop a date to get these agreements um, uh, to us? No, but we've been in active communication with them. It just, okay. it yeah. always takes time. We have to wait for their board meetings and so forth. And, you know, so there's some back and forth. Okay, so we see no reason to believe that they won't happen. Those two won't happen. No, no reason. No. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, on to the next item on the agenda, which is the site plan review on phase two of the high school field renovation project. And um, the planning board, um, specifically Gino Carlucci, the consultant, uh, sent a letter up saying that they had um, looked at it, and this is the first I've seen this particular letter. And I would like to um, accept this and uh, take it under consideration because I don't know exactly what's being constructed in. in um, specifically instructed and what's been changed and what's being moved. So I'd like those answers before I vote on this. And I know it's, a, you know, as a matter of practice, the selectmen obviously look to the planning board um, and typically go along with them. But I'd like a little more detail on this one. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, and hopefully by that point, uh, by the next meeting, we'll, we'll have a clear understanding from the town engineer. 
that page. That's a good point too. I saw that note. Um, I hope it doesn't. Um, our putting it off doesn't stall the project. Uh, well, I'm quite sure that it doesn't because they have not secured funding. Okay, so we'll take it to our next July meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now to matters at hand. And the, the next item on the agenda is the board's summer meeting schedule. And the last time we met, which was uh, a couple weeks ago, we only set this meeting up going forward. And um, because in, uh, the... June 25th, we'll have a special election in town, um, which I hope is well attended to vote for not only the new United States Senator, but uh, the town of Dover selectman, which I believe the candidates in the uh, in, in house this evening, as they speak, Robin Hunter. Hello, Robin. Thank you for coming this evening, along with everyone else. So, that being said, why don't we set up a July and August um, meeting this evening. Carol, do you have any blackout dates? Well, I'm remiss because I did not oh. take a look, nor did I bring my phone with me to, to here. Okay. So I would be glad to uh, bear with me when I get my phone. Please. Okay. We'll wait. I apologize. Mr. Cohen from the Warren Committee is here, so I know he likes to dance and sing. So, John, please, if you would. <laughs> Robin, good luck with the election, upcoming election. Okay. If you weren't here this evening, we were going to point a lot of the uh, different uh, departments to you, so thankfully you came. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave, would it be appropriate to ask Robin for a date in July? Certainly. Awesome. Thank you. I don't want to overstep my... Uh, Boundaries. So, Robin, we'll set. To, uh, we'll have one meeting in July and one meeting in August, Robin, okay. on a Thursday evening. Okay, Carol, do you have blackout dates in July? Um, for, th for Thursdays? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can't do July 18th. I can't either, so that works well. What about July 11th? Why don't we just start a date right now? I prefer not to do the 25th. Well, let's do the 11th, which is approximately about a month from now, so that uh, will work. Yeah. Robin, is uh, July 11th? I'm not sure. Um, just Certainly. So it's Thursday nights? Yes. used to the fact that this is live television, Robin. <laughs> I know, I wasn't prepared. I, I think that works, I'm not, I can't be certain. Oh, well, why don't we set July, Thursday, July 11th. Okay, okay. tentatively. Yes, please. Okay. 6.30. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. 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 okay, and let's jump ahead to August. And approximately a month later it would be, it would be August 8th. I'm um, available that date. Um, after that, I'm not until the 29th. So August 8th, I'm proposing. Not You're not available for August 8th, good. Uh, 22nd? I would be. Okay. Carol, August 22nd for you. Looks okay. Okay, I'll propose that we uh, meeting in August is August 22nd, it's, uh, which is a Thursday at 6.30 in the evening. Do we vote on those days? No, okay, good. In 
August 22nd. Okay. And at the next meeting, um, if I may, I'll schedule, I'll provide you with the schedule for the rest of the yes. fiscal year and, and we'll set the dates for the year then, mm -hmm. fall. Good. Which is great. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Great, thank you. Okay, on to other business. Special licenses. We have 13 of them this evening. Didn't we have 22 last meeting? Yes. Yeah. We have a revenue stream going here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will go through 13, then we'll vote on all 13 after the fact, if that's okay. And the first one is on Sunday, June 16th at Elm Bank. Okay. The second one is June 19th at Elm Bank. Um, on June 22nd at the Connor Center. Uh, again on, at the Connor Center on July 6th, that was the wedding. Uh, July 7th, another wedding at the Connor Center. July 10th at the Connor Center. July 11th at the Connors Center. A wedding on July 13th at the Connor Center. July 20th, another wedding at the Connor Center. July 26th at the Connor Center, we have a, a wedding. The Connor Center is a very busy place. July 29th. Again at the Connor Center, July 30th. And last but not least, at Elm Bank on August 11th is a wedding. So I'll make the motion that we approve these 13 special licenses. Can I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you seven or six. All right, this time I'm going to try that fast. really going down here. <laughs> yeah. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> you actually had good penmanship when I started on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can't read it. I've always had terrible penmanship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's a good point. Parma penmanship is what I learned. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Okay, on to um, a couple more um, important items. We have a reserve fund transfer. Now, uh, this particular uh, request doesn't have department, department name or account number. Uh, is there a reason for that? We haven't yet decided where this money would go to be expended from. This is a unique charge. Okay, then why don't you speak to the details of it, please. As you know, Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Lisbon, uh, about a year ago, we were uh, visited by the Internal Revenue Service. We have a group of select communities randomly chosen for an audit, compliance audit. They have been in and out of here um, half a dozen times in the last 12 months and they have identified some tax withholding issues for which we are going to be responsible for the liabilities and the fines associated with those. Uh, they looked at a total period of three years involving about $60 million in payroll and have determined at first blush that it looks like we're liable between the tax liability and the fees for about not to exceed $80,000. So this reserve fund transfer would cover the payment that would be required under a settlement agreement with the IRS. Do you have any sense what percentage is the liability and what percentage is the, is the, uh, the fee? There are no punitive uh, sanctions being applied here, so I'm guessing it's about 10%. It's just 
statutory fees. The rest is just these are the taxes that should have been withheld and forwarded to the IRS and so there's weren't. No, there's no upping for interest or anything like that? No, not yet, as long as we pay on time. Uh, is there a consistent pattern in which departments uh, are affected? And are those going to be corrected going forward? They have been corrected. Um, there are five different departments that were cited, and most of these problems have been historic, have existed forever. Uh, I've been doing this for now 30 odd years. The IRS has never audited a municipality before. This is something new for them starting last year. Uh, so these are very historical problems which have been corrected. And this has to do with the withholding, whether you're truly a, an employee or a contracted employee. That's one of the biggest areas of liability. But we even went, I mean, they were very thorough in the audit. They looked at how we treat uniform expenses, for example. And under our contracts and under um, the, the departments that have contracts, we have essentially established a uniform reimbursement policy, but we haven't been as diligent as the IRS would like us to be in making sure that their test is applied to every item purchased. So we have a tax liability there. And we're in the process of talking with our unions. We've talked to other departments that are affected to make sure going forward that we avoid this problem by running it through payroll. These issues sound like issues that probably all 351 cities and towns mm. in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have. Every town I ever worked in has them. Are the three years in question? Two, fiscal 2010, 11, and 12. 10, 11, and 12. So, so based on our activity with Dover and a couple of other towns, I would expect that the NMA would be sending out some kind of notice to all the other towns saying... We expect that one of the professional associations will be trumpeting this and alerting everyone that this is happening. Mm -hmm. you ex oh, sorry. sorry. No, uh, well, the three years in question is still 2013, which if you have you probably didn't fix um, these issues for fiscal 2013. So do you anticipate the IRS coming in again next year and saying, look, I mean, 2013, I was... We do not. When they originally came in, they only looked at 2010 because they found the issues they did, uh, according to the IRS representative, they were bound to look out two more years. But that's the limit of, of their uh, audit. So we don't expect that they will be back for 2013. Okay. And the demand letter has not come in yet? In the, do you know the timing of that demand letter? We are trying to expedite it to get it done. We had hoped to have it done in May, but we have not been able to process enormous amounts of paperwork back and forth with the IRS to nail this thing down. Okay. And um, to your point, this is something that's sort of a relook at a standard, a long term standard practice, right? Yes. So, this does, how does this reflect on the lens and the I don't believe that it does, given the fact that, as you pointed out, Mrs. Lewis, virtually every community in the Commonwealth has, has been more lax than they should have been, particularly in the employee versus contractor area. Typically, uh, in the towns that I've worked in and have experience with, including Dover, that decision was basically made by the department entering into the contract. Um, going forward, we will assure that, that determinations made by the people who work for you who are held responsible for these determinations so that going forward there will be communications with the finance people about can we con can we classify this individual as a contractor or do we have to put them on the payroll. So I would expect that we will not have this problem again. This is an issue in the for profit world too, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, absolutely. Um, now, um, you say the problem has been fixed, and uh, so you've gone back to the departments who the five that you mentioned. We've met with all the departments, explained the problem, listened to their explanations for why things were the way they were, uh, made independent judgments based on that because from part of the team, and made the appropriate adjustments. Okay. Now, going forward, you have to rely on them to eat, not bring those same people back as um, 1099 individuals, or uh, uh, who's going to police that and how well, they do it? In the first instance, it will be the department because we've educated them. But before any payments will be processed, the finance people will have to agree that this is the proper treatment. In the past, as I mentioned, we pretty much deferred to the departments. Right. Um, going forward, 
and I think I've mentioned this in sort of general terms about my concerns with internal control not being as centralized and as robust as it might be. Uh, not a criticism, it's just a fact. Mm -hmm. Maybe going forward we've learned from this and we will do much better at overseeing it. Okay, and so we've, the go individual ahead. departments, including ours, by the way, including ours, okay. have had the independence of hiring their own part time consultants by cl for classifying who they hire, right? right. And yes, they'll do it in consultation with and with the agreement of the finance folks prior to. This the employee signing anything to work. Right. That is and the theory. Proactive or reactive? Um, and we've explained it needs to be proactive, okay. and that they should, before they engage any new contracts, talk to the accounting office that it's appropriate to do it as a contractor versus an employee. In fact, we already had a department come in saying we're uh, thinking of bringing this new person very, very Describe what this person would be doing, you know, who they work with or for, and uh, work with her in making a determination on what their status would be. So we will have a process. Is the 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 reinterpretation by the IRS such that the number of contractors will be reduced dramatically? Well, I can't say because the only universe in front of us was the ones they disputed. So I don't know if there's 10,000 vendors in Dover and this, we, we identified a subset of 50. But of the ones that were in front of us, most of them, we agree. In fact, that when I came to work here, one of the ones that we were cited for, I scratched my head 15 years ago. Well, how, why are we? Why? Okay, it's a consultant, it's a consultant. But I didn't understand why even then. Um, it's just culture and history and it caught up with us and so 100 percent problem will be fixed I believe already has okay so there's no ambiguity on a couple of issues or anything this is no because we've explained to the various departments that the judgment will be the finance department's judgment and we'll discuss it yeah um, and weigh their considerations but ultimately the decision has to rest with the people who are responsible for enforcement and compliance down the road Curiously, when we listen to the department's historical answers, to the extent they had them, because some, like in our department, goes back before anybody here was involved, there were a lot of misunderstandings about shortfalls if they characterized it as employee, which I hope we corrected so it will eliminate the perceived incentive to artificially shunt them off on the consultant characterization instead of the employee characterization. Okay. Now, that being said, when will you make the determination about department uh, who's going to pay this? Uh, once Carol Wyden comes back and we can okay. figure out where it's the appropriate Because process. John's here from the warrant and I know you're meeting on the 24th, John? Yes. Okay. We'll I think we might want a little more... Uh, Explanation? <laughs> I, I don't... I still don't understand. These are underwithheld amounts? Yes. We're oh, no, these are not penalties to the town for improperly, not properly withholding, but the actual underwithheld amounts of most, compensation. Most of the eighty thousand dollars is actual tax liability. We should have withheld it tax and full. Liability is full on the individual. I'm pretty confused. So, but uh, this isn't the, the payroll tax liability. But the IRS is saying that these people should have been W two. Correct. Instead, uh, they were ten ninety nine. I don't understand that. Okay. Right, yes. Oh, it's the, it's the, is it the, the matching amount? Uh, the employer right. matching amount? That's, that's the short form? It's both. It's the employee as well. Well, the employee. Okay. Right. So well, you're, we're, we're, we're assuming that the, the individuals got the 1099 and paid taxes already. So it would just be the town's matching amounts. Well, in some cases, 1099s were not issued because W-9s were never submitted. Well, that's an issue upon itself. Yes. Okay. And there's a uniform issue. And then there's employees for whom withholdings were not withheld. So it's a number of different things. So for individuals where there was no 1099 issued, 
Are we going to be going back to them for any recovery? We are not planning to do so. I mean, we basically allowed all of this to happen. Well, that's a separate issue. Um, it's a practice and procedure issue versus, uh, you know, okay, we hired a guy as a contractor for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I can understand some of that, and it's been going on for so many years. But the practice and policies issue, which I'm keenly aware of, I'd like to see that tightened up. Well, as I mentioned, internal control has been one of the concerns I've had. It's historical, it's cultural, and this has been a wake-up call for us, collectively. Okay. Okay. So sure. just to reiterate then, yeah. it's now safe to say that every single person that works for the town of Dover, either as a W-2 or a 1099, will receive prior approval by our finance staff. Prior approval or approval prior to expending the funds. Ideally prior approval. But I'd be kidding if I said before any kind of check is issued. Okay. Families will be comfortable that this was proper. Every and all committees, departments, boards, and yes. whoever thinks it's independent is. Yes, and that's that's of course starting July first because all of this is just materialized in fiscal thirteen. Mm -hmm. It only affects through twelve, but it's a lingering practice through thirteen. So July one, the finance folks have been made clear it's their obligation to independently conclude that everybody's being treated correctly for tax purposes and confirming that with the departments, whether they like it or they don't like it. And this includes the local schools? What about the region? Region's a separate legal entity. Okay. Um, John, you know, you can take this up with us on Mr. Ramsey um, at a later date of, uh, prior to your June 24th meeting, if you'd like. Because I want you guys to be very clear about it. And you want to meet once more before the end of the fiscal year. Um, okay, we have another reserve fund transfer from the police. Mr. Ramsey, please. Did, did we get a vote on the first we did, one? We did oh, not. yes. Excuse me. Um, please. I Thank you. Approve eighty thousand uh, dollars for uh, back taxes and fees. I would note that the reserve fund says fines. Mm -hmm. As a, as a result of the IRS audit. Department TBD. Um, yeah, I don't like this saying fines. And I'll change it right now. And correct the spelling clothing allowance? It is on the strip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you said 10% of it, perhaps. Roughly 10%. Yeah. And fines of the not to exceed $80,000 figure that you've calculated right. somehow. Okay. You okay with that? Yes. Okay, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And when you decide what department, just uh, Give us a heads up on that one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, again, uh, next item would be a reserve fund transfer for the police. Dave, you want to speak to that one? Uh, this is a reserve fund transfer request to replace the uh, department's uh, current armory of uh, side firearms. They've had a series of problems most recently in the last two months, which have caused the chief to be concerned about the reliability of the weaponry. This request was originally in an out year on the capital budget, but based on these recent events, he would uh, strongly recommend that we purchase these firearms now. This is on for fiscal year 17. Thank you. I was just going to look that up. Thank you. I believe it's 22 guns in the armory right now. I think that's correct, Mr. Chairman, but don't hold me to that. But it is intended to replace them all so they, they stay standardized. And it's to replace the guns themselves, ammunition, and holsters. The accessories, if you will. Accessories, thank you. 
and the reason the chief wants to do it now is because of the excessive malfunctions and when I say now versus the capital budget process next year and it's totally a safety issue which I can understand um, and since it's over the last 60 days he would have missed that capital budget process if I'm reading correctly is that correct of course, the amount is the gross amount, but the, he does expect some trade-in for the current. Yes. So the net cost will be somewhere in the thirteen to fourteen thousand dollar range. That's correct, Mrs. Lisbon. Okay. And Carol, you're comfortable uh, um, putting this to the reserve fund versus capital budget process? I am only because of the safety issue. Okay. And only because of the la of the six malfunctions with the weapons over the last sixty days. Right. And just thinking about April fifteenth and all that, a major concern to me. Um, when I don't normally like yeah, yeah. undermining the capital budget process, but, and, and, and we should make sure that, that it, it, it doesn't happen often, and that it doesn't happen often, which it's is not. a good thing, um, but um, it is something to be aware of, that this isn't a way to, to go around the process and go around the public discussion and, and go around the capital budget committee's uh, review of this. But given the public safety aspect, yes, I would approve this. Okay. My final thought is to get to the chief with specific uh, manufacturing, because these were purchased, I think, in 2004, 2005? Fiscal year. Of them. Fiscal year 05. 05. So they, they May, 2000, they May uh, 2004 town meeting. Okay. Approved the purchase of 22. 22 guns. 22 guns. Uh, so, so for the purpose of the warrant committee voting on this, the chief's explanation um, may be uh, a little more detail-oriented number of guns, who the manufacturer, who the new manufacturer is. The, the, I know he's had uh, Sergeant Wilcox and a committee of his offices to vet the uh, new type of weapon that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And, I, and the, from what I understand, they did a great job of that, but perhaps for the Warren Committee uh, purpose. Certainly. And our purpose also, I might add. A little more detail. You're welcome. Okay, that in the name of safety, then I'll make the request. I'll make the motion to approve the request for transfer from reserve fund, twenty thousand five hundred and sixty dollars for twenty-two. I assume twenty-two handguns, ammunition, and, and are you would say accessories. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Now, when this goes to warrant, uh, will the chief's letter be attached to it? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Grant. Okay. Under the next item, under other businesses, catch the wave bicycle tour, which I don't know anything about. Uh, who can speak to this, Greer or? Thank you. Please. We received um, a request from the event coordinator of um, Cycle the Wave, um, their permission for this event to pass through Dover on Sunday, June 23rd. It is a small urban cycling event and it is um, to raise awareness of domestic violence and to raise funds for local domestic violence programs. They expect to pass through Dover in two waves. The first would be um, between 9 a.m. and noon, and then there's a little sister route that launches separately from Ashland, and they would pass somewhere between 9 and 11. This is a fundraiser, not a race, and uh, Chief McGowan has spoken with them. He's satisfied that um, they will abide by any safety rules that he is imposed and uh, he recommends approval of this. Good. Uh, I see that they're going to use the Dover Library parking lot. Apparently the event coordinator had already been in discussions with... Right, but who, who, who gets to um, approve the use of that parking lot? The library. Okay, it, this letter doesn't say that? No, 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 I'm sorry, that's the parking lot. I, I didn't know. Not the parking lot, no. Um, it's a Sunday though, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I just want to make no, sure right, that, that, that yeah. uh, this T is crossed. Is contingent upon confirmation of that. Sure. Okay, thank you. That jumped out at me. And I would also uh, like to, and I'm not sure they will, but it doesn't say so state in, in her uh, maintenance email to you that, um, that they will then come back and remove the root arrows and the road signs. Yeah. Sure. That's actually good because right. now then you see it up there for a week after yeah. the fact. And yeah. Who's responsible for that? Um, if you approve this, when I uh, contact her to let her know that the board has approved it, I will make that good. Uh, a requirement of the line. Okay, so um, I'll make the motion that uh, we approve the cycle of the wave contingent on the uh, library parking lot getting proper approval for use okay. and the cycle the wave group um, confirms that they'll remove uh, any of the signage and all that good stuff sure. after the fact. So I've made that motion, Carol. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. More bikes. Thanks. Our next agenda item is Cycle for Life Bicycle Tour. Gray, are you ready for this one also? Sure. Yes. Um, the um, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is asking for permission uh, for this ride to pass through Dover on Saturday, October 5th. Um, it is a charity bicycle ride which will benefit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Um, this has uh, been a ride that has passed through town before, and um, the chief has no problems. So we're going to be within the, you talked about three routes, 12, 30, and 65. So we will miss out on the 12 mile people. We'll be hit by the 30 and 65 mile people. And that's, so you're going to have 350 riders coming through Dover at the same time? Or, or, or the people, less the 12 mile people? It, 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 it's 350 total riders, I believe, for the, the whole event, not passing through town. It starts in um, Homestead. Wherever, certainly not anywhere, Dover or Sherburne. So yeah, Halston. Yeah, so, yeah. Bad of so by the time it gets here, it'll be spread out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because they're, they're recreational bike riders, so I tend to yeah. have a speedy one and you'll have a one to your family. Yeah, so we started about the, yeah. Pleasant, I call it Pleasant Street, maybe going yeah, 14, so 15, 15 miles. Right. Okay. And now, uh, to Chief Griffin's. Uh, Review? Uh, yes, Chief McGowan has reviewed. Chief it, Chief yes, yes. I'm dating myself, is, excuse me. Yes. Sorry, is. Chief McGowan. That's understandable. Um, yes, yeah, he, he's spoken with them and he's um, satisfied that they'll abide by any restrictions that he's imposed on. Okay. Uh, uh, with the knowledge of maybe 300 people, you know, spread out, whatever the case yes, may be. Yes, yeah, he gets copies of everything that you see, okay. and that he uses that as the basis for his discussion, and he goes over these rides in detail with the event coordinators. I, I haven't heard over the years of any issues. I mean, we have so many riding groups hmm. and you know, fundraisers that come through, and I think I think the police department has a down pretty pretty pat as to how they proceed. And, they, they do, and they are. The only complaints so I've ever heard are the ad hoc people running through town, not the not right. the yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. Okay, but you're right. I haven't heard any complaints, but I don't know if a large group has ever been set off at once from one area. So that was just a thought I had. Yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. Good. So I'll make um, the motion that uh, we approve the 2013 CF Cycle for Life. Um, for the Cystic Fibrosis, Fibrosis Foundation on October 5th, 2013. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next agenda item is to approve the May 21st, 2013 meeting minutes.
Whatever, it's just a, a, a small typo on line 72. Okay. Oh, yes. Huh? I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I see. It's just missing the M. M. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In the space. In the yeah, space. Yeah, We can correct that. Okay. Um, I'll make the motion to accept the meeting minutes of May 21st, 2013, with that exception, please. Mm -hmm. That can be corrected. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good, thank you. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite items on agenda is citizens' comments. And clearly, I open it up to uh, the floor to any town of Dover citizens. If there's none, Carol, I know you have a comment this evening. I do. Um, we, we don't normally um, mention uh, Dover citizens who have passed away, but over the last three weeks, we've had three exceptional gentlemen who have given probably combined over well over 100 years of service to the town, and I would like to recognize them, and that's uh, Henry Stone, Arthur Adams, and Carl Akins. So our thoughts go out to their families, and we certainly appreciate everything that uh, that they have done for Dover. I second that. Good thought. Thank you. Okay. I'll uh, entertain a motion for adjournment then. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Good night now, and thank you very much. <laughs>